All right, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be assembling this blue SCSI kit. I picked this up recently for the uh, Performa 600. I'm gonna work on it in a different video. Uh, so go ahead and dump all the content out. Now, if you're a novice to soldering and wanted to do this, um, it can be a little tricky with the SD card slot, since that is an SMD. Um, you know, other than that, it's all through hole stuff, which is pretty easy, but the SMD is what is uh, gonna cause the most trouble here for somebody who hasn't spent a lot of time soldering. Hey, let me send you a sticker. I actually got one of these in my truck. Yeah, I'm a nerd, it's fine, don't worry about it. All right, so uh, it comes with this nice 3D printed bracket for mounting and stuff falling off, it's all good. Um, so they have it screwed on. So let me just grab a screwdriver here and take that off so we can get started. Just two screws holding it in. You know, when I first started getting blue scuzzies to assemble, it was kind of right at the beginning of when they were being released. Prior to that, I'd used SCSI 2SD for a different system. And uh, well, it worked eventually in the end. It was kind of painful to get going. Um, then when I got my first blue SCSI, everything was just so much smoother. It worked so much better. Uh, can't say enough good things about these. I think there's a new uh, emulator out based on blue SCSI. Um, I'm not sure what it's called at the moment. I could look it up. But uh, supposedly it's a mix of blue SCSI and SCSI 2SD. Um, we'll have to uh, get one of those and check those out as well. I'm always looking for better stuff, but like I said, Blue Scuzzy has basically been a rock solid for me, so happy to uh, happy to use them. All right, so we got a bunch of stuff I need to solder in, uh, all the components. They do provide instructions online, uh, and I probably should look those up before I get into this. But I know we can start with the Scuzzy connector here. Uh, it is printed on the circuit board which way the notch goes, so the notch would go like this, and since it's a 45 or sorry 90 degree angle connector uh, we can just tilt it a little bit and get that in there and so with that being in there uh, we can go ahead and start soldering those pins on so when you're soldering something as big as a 50 pins SCSI connector typically you want to do a couple pins and then check out your mount to make sure it's right where you want it before you solder everything together if you just you go crazy and solder things, it's really hard to move it around later. But if you only do a couple and then check, much better luck. So I got my handy flex pen as usual because always need flex to do soldering. So I'll just spread a bunch on what I'm going to eventually solder here. And then I will grab my solder. I think I'll use the thicker stuff today. iron. The cord's a little twisted, just untwist her. Hopefully not burn myself. All right, so it'll be a little hard to hold. They do have a jig here I could use. Just to make sure I get things nice and lined up. So I think we'll do this one here. And I can do this one to hold the board kind of in place. All right. So I will start by doing pin at this end down here. All right. I'll take a look to make sure I like how it's mounted. Came a little off there with my uh, jig, so I think I'm gonna just melt that one and straighten things out a little bit. And there we go. That looks much better, nice and straight now. So now I'll go through and solder the rest of them. Hopefully if I can 
solder this way, I won't obstruct the camera. And again, that should be fairly quick due to all of the uh, flux I've applied. Should make soldering go nice and quickly. So when you're soldering, you wanna make sure that you're getting both the pin and the pad heated. Uh, some people will only heat the pin or only heat the pad, and then that doesn't really make a good connection. You might get a cold solder joint. Um, what you're trying to really do is heat everything up to the same temperature so that when the solder melts on it, it connects everything together. Um, you don't typically need a ton of solder on these connections. Um, these are a through hole, so the uh, board here does have solder pads on both sides. So I think you typically want to try to get enough solder to go through to flow to both sides, but uh, it is all electri electrically connected. So if you have not quite enough solder, then it will still make a connection. Yeah, Lane. Yeah. I got some peppermint tea. For me? Yeah, that I made. For me? It's cold now, though. Oh, it's okay. Here you go. What's up? Sure. Can I be in the video more? Sure. I'm going to talk about this. I just made a solder bridge between these two. A little too much solder in there. I'll try to melt that off and separate those. There we go. Then I'll just clean my tip off. That's how you clean it? Yep. I know I lost track where I was. I think it's these ones here. I'll spin this around. Yeah. You got me, you made me some tea? Peppermint. Is that nighttime tea? Oh, you spilled them out. Ah. That's okay. Dad. Lane. It's uh, homemade. All right. I just made it. I made it. Thanks. With can can in it. With what? Can can. Oh, candy can. Sure. Oh yeah, that's good. Spicy? Mm, yeah. Spicy good. Yeah, thanks. Hi everybody! Aren't you supposed to be in bed? Aren't you supposed to be in bed? No, I don't go to bed. Bye, idiot. Bye, guys! <laughs> you going to bed, Lane? Yeah. Okay. What? My cup. Oh, Make it all quick. Make it all quick? Yeah, I can tell. I'm drinking out of that too. Oh, great. <laughs> so I'm just slowly going through here. Hopefully, not that slowly, but connecting all of these pins to the board. All right, got another uh, solder bridge here. A little bit of extra solder on my tip. I'll try and pick that off. I'll wipe my tip off. Let's see if I can't just pick that up. There we go. Looks like that. Fix the bridge. Oh, another bridge. Again, no problem. Just get that one off. So I think they want you to do the SD card slot first on these because that's the hardest one to solder. And if you screw up, then you haven't wasted too much time. Um, so I probably should have done that first, but I'll get to that here right after this one, which is almost done. Just two more pins to go. All right. Now I'll do a quick inspection, make sure I got them all. Looks like I actually missed this first one down here. And a couple there could use a little more. first guy and then these three I think could use just a touch more so this one doesn't think there's any on it I might have missed that one and this one and this one here all right a quick visual inspection shows me that I have a huge solder blob here uh, connecting three pins together I think I might actually need to use the uh, solder wick to suck that up. No big deal. Fresh solder is quite easy to remove. All right. And I think those pins all look good. I'll just hit them with a little more since we did just take the solder off just to make sure they have good connections. All right, that looks good. 
right, so next let's flip it over. Uh, we'll do the uh, SD card, micro SD card slot, because uh, that can certainly be quite tricky to do. Uh, so we're gonna use a technique that's, that's called drag soldering, and that's kind of where we get some solder on the tip of our iron, and then just sort of drag across the contacts to get those things to stick together. So we gotta make sure we get this in the right way. And actually it looks like they've changed the orientation of this since uh, I had last built one of these SCSI, blue SCSI devices. The uh, pins used to be on the back here. I think they had a different connector. The insertion would have been on this side and the pins would have been back here. But it's all good, same kind of thing. Uh, so what I'll do first is obviously hit it with some flux. You can never have too much flux. And then what I will do is I'll tack down some of the uh, top ones here. These are used for securing the card to the board, kind of like an anchor point. Um, I do still have some solder on my iron tip here, so I'll just kind of tin those a little bit. And then I will line up the SD card reader. I might need to get my tweezers out. Actually, I think I got too much solder on there. That's all good. Yeah, that looks fine. Oops, and then I bumped it. So yeah, I'm gonna grab my tweezers. Just to give me a hand here. I'll solder that one down. Alright, so I got that one connected. I'm um, just checking the pins here. Looks like they're not quite lined up correctly. They need to nudge it a little bit towards the camera. So let me melt that off. There we go. That looks much better. So now I need to do these other couple of uh, anchor points here. So I got some uh, iron or some solder on the tip of my iron. And just kind of Get that in there to hold things together. And I will push down on it while I do this work just to make sure that it sticks on there. All right, and then one more on this side here. Seems like that is on there nice and solidly. Mm -hmm. So now we need to solder these pins that are in the front. Again, we'll be doing drag soldering. So I'm gonna just get a little bit of solder on my tip here and then just kind of drag it across these pins. And that should make a good connection. So I'll need to really inspect these to make sure that I got them all. But that's kind of how it's done. Now, if you don't want it to do, if you didn't want to do this work and you really wanted a SCSI, blue SCSI, uh, they do sell completely fabricated uh, kits, and they also sell kits with just the SD card slot soldered on. So it makes things a little bit easier if you're not quite so sure of your skills, and I'm not so quite so sure of my skills either. But you know, hey, you can't get better unless you practice. So now I'm just going back and kind of reflowing each one, make sure there's a good connection, make sure there's no solder bridges. And I think that all looks pretty good to me. So I'm just going to pick it up and take a look here under the light and make sure I can see no bridges. And I don't. And then I'm going to take my multimeter and just look to make sure that everything is truly isolated. The multimeter is giving me a strange reading, but it seems like continuity mode still works so that's good uh, so first I'll test to see if any of these are shorted to ground doesn't seem like it and I'll just go through and test these here and I'll go through one at a time and make
make sure that none of them are touching. And the beeping you're hearing is just me touching the pin on both sides to make sure I know where I am on this. And yeah, nothing, nothing sharded. That's good. If there's a cold solder joint, we can fix that a little more easily later. Fixing a short and then giving it power, certainly not ideal. All right, so now we have a few more components to install. Um, we do also need to solder the uh, pin headers to the blue pill itself, which is here. Um, so we've got a couple of resistors, a resistor network. Um, I think I will start with the resistor network first. That's well, gonna be a little harder to solder once things are in there. So we've got a total of four of them. Uh, two 20 ohms and two 330 ohms um, and they're labeled on them uh, so this is a 220 and this is 330 and we've got another 330 here and a 220 here so these are uh, they do have polarity so you can't put them in backwards and expect things to work um, so pins one are marked uh, on the older blue SCSI boards, the pin one, I think, would go together. Uh, here it looks like they're all inserted the same way. So that's another change they've made. Um, and there's a little dot on the resistor network on the end. That's how you know which one pin one is. So this is a 330, and pin one goes this way. So I'll just kind of hold that in there with my finger. Uh, there's plenty of flex from the previous one I've done here, so let me just grab a little bit of solder on the tip and I'll just get that to the first pin here I'll maybe grab a little more all right so what I'm gonna do now since that's not taking hit it with some flux when in doubt more flux We go we got that one tacked in so now I'll go through and finish up all the other pins for it all right looks good I don't see any bridges there. So next I will do the other 330. And I think earlier I said 20, it should have been 220, so my mistake, but they're pretty easy to not get mixed up when you're doing this work. And again, pin one marked on the resistor network with a little dot. So the pin one goes into pin one. I'll just kind of hold it in there. Grab my iron, put some solder on it, and then just tack it in with pin one here. Oh, and you know I forgot the flux, so let me let me do the flux. All right, got that tacked in. Uh, I'll go through and finish it up. that check that out make sure there's no bridges there see any bridges on that one uh, I see a big one right in the middle let me fix that just gonna try to pull that away and wipe the tip off there we go. that looks much better now on to the 220s so again uh, they're marked with pin one as noted before uh, pin one goes into the pin one hole Hold that on there. This time I will not forget the flux. 
I got my iron, got some solder on the tip. And just tack that in there. So that looks good. So I'll go through and finish that one up. Seems being a little stubborn. There we go. Got her. You know, and if you're having trouble getting the heat to transfer, uh, first step is always more flux, but you can also put a little bit of pressure on the pin. Um, that might help get the heat to transfer so that the solder melts. But we got that one there. So that looks good too. And we've got one more resistor network to put on. So again, I'm gonna find pin one, make sure that goes into pin one hole. Hold that on. And hit it with some flux. Because flux is life. Grab some solder on my iron. Tack the one pin on. And there we go, good to go. Now I'll just finish that one up. And really I think the difference in price between the kit and the finished one isn't too much so you know you're not getting ripped off if you have them assemble it for you uh, that's for sure it's certainly costing me a bunch of time to do but uh, I do enjoy the work so I'm more than happy to build these myself the more practice you have soldering the better you are at it so that one looks good too all right we've got a couple more components to put on uh, we have our bird connector for power goes up here. Uh, we've got some diodes, uh, the termination resistor block, so that's just two jumper blocks that go here, and then the blue SCSI itself. So let's do the diodes next. Uh, I believe both these diodes are the same value. 58, 18, 99, 20. 58, 18, 99, 20 they are. So diodes obviously uh, what a diode does is it allows current to go through in one direction but not the other so they obviously need to have polarity for that to work uh, so I'm gonna bend them and then put them into the hole uh, you can look on the board here and see that uh, it is marked with the polarity here so there's the white stripe that matches the white stripe on the diode itself so that just goes into these holes here Ideally, just goes right in, but sometimes you gotta play with it a little to get it to go in. Looks like these diodes might be just a little thicker on the leads than they were expecting. So let me grab some pliers. Just kind of help me through. So when you're using pliers on a board, you gotta be careful not to rip things out, but be very gentle. And then we got those through. So no problem there. And we'll get the second diode, bend the leads again, make sure the polarity is correct, and put it into the two holes here. And we'll want it just a little bit smoother. All right, so we'll bend those leads. So they don't fall out and now we can solder those on. I said it before there should be plenty of flux on here and there wasn't but it looks like this time there is still plenty of flux lying around so I think we're good. I'll just spin the board around here sorry. Don't quite see this one but it's all right you get the idea. So with those soldered in I can cut the legs off cutters. And those are quite thick leads on these for whatever reason. But we should be good. Shouldn't have caused any problems. Alright. So next we need to do the two termination blocks. Just 
feed those in here. And I will solder those on. So in this case, uh, there is the bare metal touching my hand and we're using heat to melt the solder. Uh, so very likely this is going to burn me when I do this, but I'll try to be really quick, try to minimize pain to my finger. Yep, that hurts. Let's try to get it on there quick. Oh, we got one on. Not the second one. And it's not too bad. All right. So now that they're both tacked in there, uh, I can straighten them out because they ended up a little crooked. It's all good. Straighten this one out. There we go. Got them much straighter. So I can finish getting those connected. Well, I want to make sure that I do the two pads that I didn't tack it in with. So if I heat up the solder on the pad that I tacked it in with, it'll just fall right out. And all that pain will have been for nothing. Which is what I think I did on that one, maybe. But that's okay. Alright. Take a look at our work. Looks pretty good to me. Alright, and then we've got uh, a couple of more... Uh, leads we need to put in for the power and activity LEDs. So some of the early Blue Scuzzies didn't have that. Um, with a real hard drive, uh, they have provisions to allow LEDs on the front of the machine light up when the hard drive's on and actively doing things. Um, so they've just got some leads for those here, which is a super nice addition. Just tack those on. tacked in place, we'll finish that up. That's good. All right. So next we have two resistors we need to put in. Those go at the top of the board up here, R1 and R2. Resistors don't have polarity, so they can go in, in any direction. Um, since they resist current either way equally well. Just finagle the leads in here until we get things where we want them, then bend the leads out of the way. Pull those tight through the board, bend the leads. And I don't have any flux really over here yet, so we'll hit these with some flux. And we'll solder those on. I don't think I made a good solder there. Actually, it turned out okay. So I had enough uh, solder on the tip of my iron to do the first three. So I only needed to apply solder to the fourth one. That down, we can cut these leads off. One, two, three, four. Scooch those out of the way. All right, so all that leads us to do then is the bird connector. Um, and this does need to go a certain way. Um, I, the machine I'll be putting this in doesn't need external power. Um, it does provide power through the term or through SCSI termination on the bus itself. Uh, some of the older Macs don't do that, and then some of the other things these go in, like synthesizers, may or may not. I don't know for sure. Um, so it's an option. You don't even need to solder it on if you don't plan on using it. But since I've got it, I'll do it. Just 
tack that on as usual. Grab a little more solder. Right. With that tacked down, we can finish up getting it mounted. Alright, that's good for me. So I don't see uh, any bridges or anything. Everything's looking really good so far. And that leaves us with just the blue pill to solder on. And again, I mentioned I do need to solder the blue pill on to the uh, leads here first. So let's start with that. So again, gonna hit it with flux. That's what we do here. No such thing as too much flux. Okay, that might have been too much. I got that kind of all over. All good though, nope, not a problem. Grab some solder on my iron. And I'll tack in this first leg here. And I'll tack in this last leg over here. Grab a little more solder. And I'll tack in the first leg over here. And I'll tack in this leg over here. Now what we want to do next is make sure that before we go through and solder everything, we want to make sure it's actually going to fit into the blue SCSI board. Um, blue SCSI board does denote which way it goes. It says USB down here at the bottom and the USB port is here. So we'll just do a test fit to make sure this is going to go in and it looks like it's going to fit just fine. So now I'm going to go through and solder all of these leads on. Move some stuff out of the way here. A little tricky to do uh, with the camera, but I'll try my best here. I think my hand's probably blocking it. Let me try to move a little bit and see if I can get that. Be a little generous with the solder here, since this is going to be kind of structural. But I gotta be wary of bridges. Put too much solder on, it's really easy to get a bridge. And I'm just coming to the end of this side. All right, that's that side done. Switch to the other side. Go back and redo that first pin. Got some extra solder on there. the last one here. All right, now I will inspect my work. Make sure there's no bridges. Make sure there's no missed pins. It all looks good to me. So now we can solder it into the board itself. Uh, again, USB goes down here as noted. So we'll just get that in there. And as always, flex. At this point, you should know that that's just how I roll. Got flux everywhere. It's all over my tools, it's all over my hands. Wake up the next morning smelling like flux. You know I had a good night the night before. So again, just gonna tack in the four corners, grab solder directly off onto my iron. And grab a little more here. Well, this one we don't need to check the alignment because it's going to be good. I'm pushing it in with my other hand while I'm holding it. Grab a little more solder here. 
All right. Then we'll go through and just solder all these pins together. Well, hopefully not together. Solder them to the board. And if we solder them together, we'll fix it. That one could use a little more. Oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. Coming up on the end here. And one more to go on this side. Then we'll flip it around. Do this side. I'm sure that Half of these shots are out of frame, the other half are blocked by my hand. I'm still trying to figure out the best place for a camera. And I think I see a lot of people on YouTube doing this kind of work with an overhead camera. Not really equipped to have an overhead cam here easily. I might have to look into that this weekend and see if I can figure out a good place to mount one. I'm just using my phone as the camera for the most part. I do have some other cameras around here I might end up using, but easiest with the phone. Well, that's the last one here, and we got her. All right, so I'm gonna inspect my work one more time. That all looks good to me. I think I'm actually gonna re retouch this very first pin that I tacked down. I think I could use a little bit more. Otherwise, it looks good. Cool, so uh, as mentioned, there's flux everywhere. So what I'm going to do is go wash my hands and I'm going to put an SD card in here, leave the flux, that's fine. And then we will power it up in this machine, see if anything blows up. All right, so I've got my uh, SD card, micro SD card ready. So I've loaded a, a System 753, I believe, image on here. So I'm going to put this into the SD card reader slot. And I do need to still get all of the uh, flux off of here. But just for now, I'm gonna put it in the bracket and then I will put it in my Performa 600 over here and boot it up and see what happens. We'll be right back. All right, well, I've got my Blue SCSI device fitted into my Performa 600. Let me take a look at it here. Um, I do have the original mounting screws for the original hard drive plate, uh, but everything's wired up. Uh, I'm not using the Berg connector because the Performa 600 does provide uh, power through termination, so no need for that. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and power things up then. All right, we got the flashing blue light immediately and then the red light, which is solid, which is good. Uh, if the blue light flashes five times and then off and repeats, that means it can't read the SD card. Uh, so that means the SD card soldered incorrectly. So we'll give this performer here just a little bit to start up. All right, and we can see the blue activity light on the blue pill, and we can see that we are booting into Mac OS here. So I just grabbed a, a 7.5 image off of uh, Macintosh Archive. I think it's a Raskuzzy image, but they all work with each other, so no problem there. So not, not a custom install or anything. So let me position the camera a little better. Ideally, it's a little better. All right, and we're booted up. So let's take a look at about this Macintosh. So we've got still our 20 megs of RAM. Everything's looking real good here. I don't know what's on this image. I don't think there's much on it. Just some additional extensions and things. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed the multi-part series on getting this Performa 600 back into fighting shape. Uh, we recapped the system board, and we fitted a blue SCSI into it that we built ourselves. So I think that's it. Get this one all put back together and call it good.
So thanks so much for watching the videos. Hope you have a great rest of your day.